Hi, welcome to Words on Water, a podcast from the Water Environment Federation. This is a special edition for WEFTEC Connect. I am very excited to be joined by Chandler Johnson. He is Chief Technology Officer of World Water Works. Chandler, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me today, Travis. Absolutely. Before we dive into nutrient limits and nutrient removal, uh, could you talk a little bit about World Water Works? Sure. World Water Works is a company that's now 21 years old. Uh, it was established as a industrial treatment solution technology with the dissolved air flotation as the single product line. Uh, as clients were successful in treating their TSS issues, soluble BOD needed to start being tackled. And thus a collaboration was, was bought when I was working at a different company and I provided MBBR technology to World Waterworks. And subsequently, I actually joined World Waterworks 10 years ago now um, uh, and bringing on more nitrogen removal aspects, which is what we're talking about today in the municipal type industry. So uh, we, we definitely have grown from a single technology provider to a whole suite of technologies that municipal and even industrial clients can utilize to increase the treatment efficiency of their systems, meet new effluent requirements, uh, and even you know do more with what they have. Mm -hmm. So what is happening out there with effluent requirements, with nitrogen limits on wastewater treatment facilities? What's kind of the landscape? Well, you know, North America is actually very wide ranging. Now, of course, uh, with the, the warmer weather, say Florida, they've had nutrient limits for over 20 years, both nitrogen and total nitrogen. But if you go up to the Midwest, you go into Canada, uh, because of the cold nature of the those applications, there really wasn't any application for requiring nitrogen or even ammonia removal. That is now changing. Um, we're now getting more and more requirements for small municipalities, facilities that have lagoon type treatment systems that was mainly treating for BOD and TSS. And now they're having to meet nitrogen, with whether it's ammonia nitrogen or even total nitrogen requirements, which means having to upgrade these facilities to meet these new effluent requirements, which makes it very unique in these colder applications because the bacteria do grow at a slower rate and their overall uh, kinetic factor is a lot lower, uh, requiring a lot more land space if you're looking at, say, conventional activated sludge versus, say, an MBBR or an IFAS type technology. So what are the challenges for water facilities, for wastewater facilities in trying to meet these new nitrogen limits and in, in cranking things down? What, what, what are the challenges in doing that? I think one of the biggest challenges, uh, like I mentioned earlier, is temperature. Temperature does play a big role um, into how a system is going to be designed. Um, I think the other factor is footprint. A lot of <clears throat> wastewater plants were built without any houses around them many years ago. And now the infrastructure is pulling in a lot of these housing developments very close to the wastewater plants, which means there's not enough room to expand. So the, the word in the industry the last couple of years has been intensification. How can we reuse and utilize the infrastructure that they currently have and build to it, treat more in less with less is another phrase that we kind of use and throw around because we're trying to increase the capacity of existing treatment systems to meet these new effluent requirements. And those are the, the, the major, I think, hurdles uh, that need to be done. And I imagine cost is, is something they have to deal with as well. The, the cost of having to put in new technology and, and change things around and, and go through this process. Yeah, I agree. I think there's there's not a lot of state funding, federal funding like there was years ago to help build concrete tanks, uh, which is really what was done in the past. Now we're just trying to reutilize those tanks at the most efficient rate possible. Um, you know, and I think, yeah, definitely cost is a huge uh, factor with municipalities. Well, let's talk solutions then. Um, how can a facility increase nitrogen removal, you know, meet those limits in, an, in the most effective and efficient way? 
Well, one of the newer technologies that we have as World Waterworks is an Animox based technology. Um, it's called Demon. And because it's treating high strength ammonia wastewater from side streams, which are typically very warm in temperature, the, it is one of the most cost effective solutions for treating nitrogen. Now, this application is mainly at only facilities that have anaerobic digestion systems. So it's not widespread through the entire wastewater community, but it definitely is the most cost effective because you are taking advantage of those warmer waters that are coming from the dewatering system from the anaerobic digestion. And those ammonia values are being recycled back to the main plant. And again, by using this animox based technology, you're able to reduce the ammonia nitrogen by about 85 to 90 percent and the total inorganic nitrogen by about 75 to 80 percent. So it is a huge impact on the main wastewater treatment facility because in some applications, this wastewater stream could represent up to 40 percent of the ammonia load coming back around to the plant. So it's definitely a very big uh, opportunity. Um, I would say for the majority of wastewater plants that don't have anaerobic digestion, uh, we would look at our IFAS technology. IFAS is uh, integrated fixed film activated sludge, and that is the marrying of your conventional activated sludge and your MBR technology. So it's a fixed fixed plastic carrier media that's moving around in the reactor, growing nitrification bacteria. But what you're able to do is utilize the existing infrastructure to accomplish nitrogen removal. I'll give you a case. Our facility at Emporia, Kansas, only treated 3 million gallons a day for BOD and TSS within a certain infrastructure. We repurposed those existing tanks for biological phosphorus removal, denitrification and nitrification to meet an overall less than 10 milligrams per liter total nitrogen and less than one milligram per liter total phosphorus. Mm. So by utilizing the IFAS technology, this facility was able to use their existing infrastructure and increase that overall treatment capacity. Wow, those are incredible examples that are great solutions. Technology is always changing. Uh, it seems regulations change uh, pretty frequently as well. As you look forward, um, you know, pull out your crystal ball here. What, what do you see happening with with nitrogen removal, both in terms of the limits that are that are put on facilities and also the solutions that are available? Well, I think they're just going to get lower, um, you know, and I think that we're bringing it back around intensification. I think. Uh, other technologies like the the indense gravimetric selection system is 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 helping facilities increase their uh, mixed liquor concentrations, increase their solids loading concentrations to the clarifier. So, in regard, they're actually building up more biomass, and they're able to treat more wastewater in a smaller footprint, utilize their existing clarifiers. Um, so, as nitrogen limits get increased, uh, which means lower concentrations for both ammonia, total nitrogen, um, even in the, the colder climates, they're going to have to meet these requirements. And having the ability to utilize a multiple set of technologies, like we mentioned, the Animox based technology, the IFAS, um, and even the indents with, with a combination of controls, um, you know, that's where you're going to also save some money. Um, you know, again, money is a is a heartburn for most municipalities, whether it's a capital budget um, or your operation expense. Um, years ago, 60 percent of an activated such plant's energy was based on aeration. Mm. So that's a huge factor of, of cost for a municipality and, you know, utilizing control technologies um, with respect to minimizing how much energy could be required, but still maintaining good effluent quality. And that's where the AVN technology would also help with that um, um, uh, as a combination with the indents application. Great. Uh, Chandler, if folks want to get a hold of you all, learn more about these issues, learn more about the solutions you've mentioned today, just what are the best ways to, to find World Water Works? Well, 
as this is part of the Weft Tech Connect, uh, we are an exhibitor as part of the technical session. Um, so feel free to look us up, schedule a meeting with us. Uh, that's going to be the easiest way to do it. Um, as our portal, worldwaterworks.com is our website. Feel free to browse the different technical solutions, case studies that we have on the uh, website. And, uh, you know, my uh, uh, availability through email or phone. Fantastic. Well, uh, definitely a pressing issue. I'm so glad we caught up to talk about it. Thank you for your time and perspective. I appreciate your time and thanks very much.